Few scandals have rocked the royal family harder than the Jeffrey Epstein scandal, but how much do we really know about the disgraced financier's friendship with Prince Andrew? It remains a matter of dispute when exactly Prince Andrew first crossed paths with Jeffrey Epstein. Andrew claims the pair met in 1999, but the Duke's own private secretary has suggested that they had known each other since the early 90s. Meanwhile, journalist Guy Adams has claimed they met in 1998 after Sarah Ferguson and her two young daughters vacationed on Epstein's private island. Ferguson had reportedly become friendly with Epstein's accomplice and erstwhile girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell. It was reportedly through Maxwell that the two men became acquainted. Andrew, who was believed to have been best friends with the socialite, had known Maxwell since her Oxford University days. Maxwell was more or less responsible for organizing Epstein's social life. As such, she introduced her royal pal to the elusive financier. It remains unclear what drew the prince to the dodgy billionaire. Insiders have argued that Andrew was enticed by the lack of pomp in Epstein's world, which stood in stark contrast to the restrictions of royal protocol. It has often been noted that, despite all his riches, Epstein opted to wear jeans and sweatpants rather than suits and ties. In 2011, an insider told Vanity Fair, I remember when Andrew and Jeffrey Epstein first became friends. Jeffrey had Andrew put on a pair of sweatpants for the first time in his life. He had him wear blue jeans for the first time. It was Jeffrey who taught Andrew how to relax. Despite his ties to the wealthiest people in the world, it's been said that Jeffrey Epstein was in awe of the British royal family. So, when Prince Andrew invited his new friend to Sandringham for a pheasant shoot in 2000, the con man from Coney Island likely found that his dreams had come true. However, Andrew has insisted that it was Ghislaine Maxwell, not Epstein, whom he invited to Sandringham, with the businessman simply being Maxwell's plus one. It was his girlfriend that was the key element in this. Be that as it may, the royal mingling didn't end there. Epstein also attended a party to celebrate four royal birthdays later that year. Moreover, he was a guest at Princess Beatrice's 18th birthday party in 2006. An insider told The Sun, he brought these people into the royal fold, to Windsor Castle no less, where they could rub shoulders with the great and good. It is an astounding lack of judgment at the very least. At the time, Epstein was set to be arrested for child abuse. In his infamous Newsnight interview, Andrew was asked why he invited Epstein to his teenage daughter's party, despite the serious criminal charges he was facing. Again, he claimed that he'd invited Maxwell, not Epstein, and was unaware of his impending arrest. An awful lot of this was going on in the United States, and I wasn't a party to it, and I knew nothing about it. Some have suggested that Prince Andrew was merely a pawn for Jeffrey Epstein, who loved showing off the prince to his friends. In 2000, Epstein and Andrew attended a party at Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort, where the future president excitedly announced that the prince, who had been introducing himself as Andrew York, was in attendance. Subsequently, insiders have argued that Andrew became a vital asset for both Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. In 2001, one insider told The Evening Standard, Ghislaine is manipulating him and he's too naive to realize it. She's his social fixer and he's going along with it. Why? Because I think Epstein's fantastically impressed by it all. Despite being on first name terms, Andrew insisted to Newsnight that Epstein wasn't a close friend of his and that he didn't see the billionaire much when he traveled to the US. It would be um, a, a, a considerable stretch to say that he was a very, very close friend. By 2000, the friendship between Prince Andrew and Jeffrey Epstein was in full swing. Over the course of a year, the pair had been on five vacations together, always with Ghislaine Maxwell in tow. Then there's the matter of Epstein's island, Little St. James, which has since been dubbed Pedophile Island. Andrew first visited the island in 1999 and returned at least twice more. Some have suggested that Andrew, Epstein, and Maxwell even became a thruple of sorts, as Andrew was rarely spotted without Epstein, who in turn was never seen without Maxwell. Indeed, a 2002 New York Magazine profile noted that Andrew was a staple of Epstein's inner circle. However, Andrew refuted this in his interview with Newsnight, claiming that he only saw Epstein a couple of times a year. If he wasn't there, he would say, well, why don't you come and use my houses? So I said, that's very kind, thank you very much indeed. Soon enough, Prince Andrew got swept up by the excesses of Jeffrey Epstein's lavish lifestyle. In May 2000, he went on vacation to Florida with Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, where he became a regular of the Crowbar nightclub and reportedly began spending a great deal of money. He was later photographed in numerous other compromising situations, including getting cozy with topless models and sweating excessively at a nightclub. Despite, you know, this. I simply, it, it, was, it, was, it was almost impossible for me to, to, to sweat. In 2003, a young woman who was working for Ghislaine Maxwell told Vanity Fair that Andrew was present at questionable parties hosted by Epstein. One such party featured numerous young Russian models who were dressed in eyebrow-raising attire. The woman recalled, Some of the guests were horrified. 
These antics led to embarrassment for the royal family, with Andrew being dubbed the party prince. An insider told the Evening Standard, he doesn't give a damn about what anyone else thinks anymore, just what pleases him. He is not listening to reason. Years later, Andrew insisted to Newsnight that he didn't have a penchant for partying, despite his frequent dalliances with Epstein. I never have really parted. In 2010, Prince Andrew was photographed walking with Jeffrey Epstein through Central Park. At this point, there was no doubt about Epstein's paedophilia, with the financier having been convicted of soliciting a minor in 2008. He was sentenced to 18 months in jail. Nevertheless, Andrew went to stay at Epstein's New York home shortly after his release and was guest of honor at a dinner party hosted by the sex offender. When asked by Newsnight why he continued his friendship with Epstein despite his criminal convictions, Andrew claimed that he had to break up with Epstein in person as opposed to over the phone. My judgment was probably coloured by my um, tendency to be too honourable. This admission doesn't quite line up with what insiders have claimed, however. In 2011, an insider told Vanity Fair, After Jeffrey was convicted, I phoned Andrew and told him, You cannot have a relationship with Jeffrey. You can't do these things. And he said, Stop giving me a hard time. You're such a Puritan. Leave me alone. Jeffrey's my friend. Being loyal to your friends is a virtue. Juan Alessi, who worked for Jeffrey Epstein, has claimed that Prince Andrew was present during parties that prominently featured undressed, underage girls. It was during one of these parties that Prince Andrew first met sex trafficking victim Virginia Dufre, who later accused the prince of sexually abusing her when she was 17. According to Dufre, Epstein trafficked her to London in 2001, where she was allegedly first assaulted by Andrew. Speaking to the BBC, Dufre claimed that she was abused by the prince on two subsequent occasions, in New York and on Epstein's private island. During their second meeting, Epstein gifted his royal friend an unusual present, a leather puppet in his likeness from the British TV series Spitting Image. In her unpublished book, Dufre alleged that Andrew used the puppet to grope her breast. She wrote, Ghislaine wanted to take a picture of the bizarre scene and even got Johanna Joberg, another one of Jeffrey's so-called personal assistants, to come and sit on his other knee for the snapshot. Joberg has also accused Andrew of groping her. Epstein died by suicide in jail in 2019, meaning that Dufre and his other victims will never get to see him face prosecution. However, Dufre did pursue legal action against Andrew, filing a civil suit in 2021. The following year, the case was settled out of court for an undisclosed amount. Andrew always maintained his innocence in the proceedings. On the face of it, Prince Andrew seems to have effectively become a pariah in the Windsor family. Following his association with Jeffrey Epstein and disastrous Newsnight interview, he made the decision to step down from royal duties. In a statement, he expressed regret over his friendship with Epstein, though stopped short of acknowledging any impropriety. He said, I deeply sympathize with everyone who has been affected and want some form of closure. I can only hope that, in time, they will be able to rebuild their lives. Soon after, Andrew was stripped of his HRH honorific and military titles. Well, they've cut Andrew off from public duties. They've airbrushed him out of royal life. Seeing as Andrew was reportedly Queen Elizabeth's favourite son, the situation was particularly difficult for Her Majesty. Royal expert Katie Nicholl told Entertainment Tonight he had no option, the Queen had no option, but for Andrew to step back from royal duties. In December 2022, King Charles III evicted Andrew from Buckingham Palace. He is also no longer entitled to private security, which had previously cost taxpayers millions of dollars a year. That said, it doesn't seem like Charles has been totally willing to cut Andrew off. In August 2023, the Mirror reported that the new king had overruled Prince William in a dispute over Andrew's place in the family. According to the outlet, Charles insisted that Andrew's exile had come to an end, and even forced William to drive Andrew to a church service in Scotland, despite the Prince of Wales's insistence that he would not be seen in public with his disgraced uncle. One source said, It's more than Andrew could have wished for. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673.